I'm going to now talk about the cancellation properties for the trigonometric function sine, cosine, and tangents. Uh, these are the uh, six of them. So there are two for each, one for sine, and then cosine, and then tangent. Let's talk about sine first. We know that uh, if you look at the first one we have stated here, let's call this the first one. Uh, if you compose sine with its inverse, so that's why this is here, then the result is x, meaning just the input right here, as long as x is within the restricted domain of sine inverse. So if you look at the graph of sine, cosine, or tangent, those functions are not one-to-one -one functions. So we have to restrict their domain in order for the inverse function to exist or to talk about the inverse. So therefore, if you restrict its domain, you get the inverse function. So for a sine inverse, we know the domain is negative one-to-one. -one. So as long as your input, uh, this x right here, is within this boundary, then you're allowed to kind of cancel them. That's what we call it, the cancellation property. So it's just the input. Similarly, for the second one I have listed here, now if you switch the composition order, now you're doing sine inverse with sine. Now again, you can um, use the cancellation property and it's the result is x. That's what we have here. As long as, again, x is within this restricted boundary because that's where we make sine uh, one to one function. That's the restricted domain for sine. Let's see how we can do an example applying these properties. I've got two examples for you right here. Take a look at the first one. So we want to evaluate sine inverse of sine of pi over four. So you wanna make sure this value is within the restricted domain of sine. So we know that the restricted domain for sine is right here, negative pi over two to pi over two. So that means if this value is within this domain, then we can use this property and think of canceling them. So our answer will simply be just pi over four. So that will be the answer because we know that pi over 4 is within negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's where we're allowed to do that. So there isn't much work except that we need to understand uh, the domain of that restricted function. Now let's take a look at the next one. So for the next one, we want to find sine inverse sine of 2 pi over 3. Now again, you have to make sure this angle is within the restricted domain for sine. So for sine, we want the domain, whatever this angle is, we want that to be within this boundary from negative pi over two to pi over two. Now two pi over two is not within uh, this boundary. So that means we need to find its reference angle so we can replace it and then we can use the cancellation property. So let's do that. So two pi over three is, um, you can rewrite it like this. This is pi over three plus pi over three. So if you draw this angle, it's gonna uh, terminate right here. So from standard position, pi over three, that's 60. So 60 and another 60. So that's right here, 120. This is two pi over three. So two pi over three, where's the reference angle? The reference angle is this piece right here. So this, this angle, we're going to find that by simply doing pi minus two pi over three, which is equal to pi over three. So now I can replace the angle two pi over three with this value that I just found, and then I can apply the cancellation property. So replace it right there. So once you replace it, you're going to have this statement. So you're going to get sine inverse of sine of two pi over three is equivalent to sine inverse of sine of pi over three. And now using the cancellation property, this is simply pi over three. So that will be the answer. And of course, this is the answer because this angle is within its restricted boundary, which was negative pi over two to pi over two. So this is checked. Now for cosine and its inverse, now if you compose them, you can use the cancellation property as long as the following holds. So for the first one I have right here, if you do cosine compose with its inverse, then you can cancel them as long as this x is within the restricted domain for cosine inverse. And similarly for the second composition, now if you switch the order of the composition, so you do cosine inverse with cosine, now again, you can apply this 
property, it is equal to x as long as x lies within this boundary from 0 to pi. So it's slightly different from sine and its inverse because cosine happens to be one-to-one -one in a different interval than sine as we get it from the graph. So let's see if we can apply this to these two examples here. So for the first one, we want to evaluate cosine inverse of cosine of 2 pi over 3. So we need to worry about the domain of this function. So for cosine, we know cosine uh, is 1 to 1 on the interval from 0 to pi. So we want our angle to be between 0 to pi. Now, is 2 pi over 3 within 0 to pi? Yes, it is. If you want to check. So 2 pi over 3, that's simply pi over 3 plus pi over 3, which is 120. So if you draw it, so 2 pi over 3 terminates somewhere right here. This is 2 pi over 3. And if you look at the unit circle, uh, this right here from here to here, this is pi. So we have the value that's given is within the restricted domain. So we're free to use the cancellation property and call that the answer is 2 pi over 3. So you simply just cancel them. All right, now the next one, um, number two, again, we ask ourselves the same question. Is this angle within the restricted domain for cosine since cosine is the inner function? Again, we want to make sure this angle has to be between 0 to pi. So 5 pi over 3, let's see where that is. So let's rewrite 5 pi over 3. You can write that as 3 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. And we know 2 pi over 3, that's 120 in degrees. So let's hold on to that. But 3 pi over 3, that simplifies to pi plus 2 pi over 3. So when you're drawing this angle, you draw pi first. So pi means 180, that's pi. And then 2 pi over 3, that's going to terminate right here. So it's beyond the restricted domain. So it's, it's not within the first and the second quadrant. It's in the fourth quadrant, which means we need to replace this with the reference angle. If you can replace it with the reference angle, then you can cancel uh, these functions. So we need to figure out what this angle is because that is your reference angle. So we're going to find that angle. So our reference angle is going to be 2 pi minus the given angle, which is 5 pi over 3. And that will give you 6 pi minus 5 pi, that's pi over 3. So that's what I'm going to replace it up there. So we can say that cosine inverse of cosine of 5 pi over 3 is equivalent to cosine inverse of cosine of pi over 3. So we simply replace the given angle with the reference angle. That's what you see right here. And now, is this angle within the restricted boundary? Of course it is. It is within 0 to pi. So now using the cancellation property, our answer is pi over 3. So there you have it. That's how you apply um, cancellation property. Same thing will go for tangent inverse. So feel free to do those examples uh, on your own. See you next time.